Okay, if you've had a meniscal tear in your knee, most common medial meniscal tear, but it can be a lateral meniscal tear, and you're not going to surgery, it's one of those ones that doesn't need surgery, it needs to heal, and you need to strengthen, I've got four exercises that are safe, good strengthening exercises for you to do with your meniscal tear. Now, these are ones that are stable, okay? So the meniscus, it's not a flat tear that needs surgery. It's one of those ones where you can either, it's either gonna heal or it's gonna stay dormant, meaning it's a tear, but it's asymptomatic, okay? So one of those tears that you've recovered from and it's not hurting to walk on and you need to strengthen it because you're not going for surgery, then these exercises are for you. We're gonna start off with doing a simple squat. Now you might think, okay, yeah, great squats. They've gotta be light and you've gotta make sure you're in the right position and you don't go below a certain height. So we're gonna go through that one. Then you need to start working on some semi-single leg and then a single leg work. So you go from a squat to a lunge. We're gonna start with unweighted on that to make sure you get all your angles right. So you can safely do the lunge with knee angles and making sure you're getting the tibia forward and in your back and your thigh in the right position so you're loading correctly with the compression. Then we go through a single leg squat, which is one of the most essential ones to do, and that's for your knee stability. Because you've gotta make sure that you are getting not just knee strength, you're getting knee stability when it comes to meniscus because part of the meniscus creates stability in the joint. We need to reinforce that with brain to knee. And the last one is simply getting your quads going more with the leg extensions because leg extensions are great for your quadricep building. Okay, they give you that VMO and quad support for your knee. They're safe for you with the muscle tears. There's nothing wrong with them. I love them. And they're a really good way to get those quads pumped up. So we'll go through all four of those and see how you go with that. So, first up, squat. Let's have a look at that, because a lot of people are worried about squats when they have meniscal tears. Now, <clears throat> the trick is, and you can do this weighted, I like being at weighted, now whether you have two kettlebells or say, one kettlebell, the easiest way of doing it is using kettlebells in the front so you can control the squat a little bit. There's no point putting a heavy bar on your back. We don't want to go heavy with this, we want to be reasonably light, because we're just after a bit of maintenance. But when you are squatting, what you want to aim for is making sure your setup is good because if your knees, <clears throat> let's start like this, if your knees are out here, if you're used to squatting out there and then you roll your knee in, you're going to create a sort of tension through that knee which is not going to be happy with that meniscus. So you've got to make sure when, when you've got your knees parallel, sorry, your feet are parallel, your knees are going to be over your feet when you squat down. Of course when you start off, you start off in like a triangle where your knees are going to be inside your feet. But when you bend your knees and sit your bum down, your knees come naturally out and then they go straight over so your shins are like vertical, okay? Now, <clears throat> that's from the front. Very important stuff so you're not doing this sort of knee angle roll. Your meniscus won't like that. From the side, what I want you to make sure of when you squat, and I'll look in the mirror just to make sure my angles are correct, is that you let your knees go forward. Okay, so when you get down into this position, your shins and your lower back are the same angle. Okay, so what I don't want is not letting your shins go forward and sort of tipping into a deadlift. We don't want that, because that's not gonna do much for your quads or your bum. The other thing we're gonna work on is making sure you don't go and load your knees forward too much into that position and then trying to drop down. So it is knees and bum at the same time and your mission is don't go lower than about there. I, what I want you to try and aim for when you're in a loaded squat for your meniscus to look after it is keep your hips above the height of your knee at the bottom of the squat. That also looks after your lower back as far as keeping it straight. But when you're here, you don't wanna be rounding down to there, especially people who've got a posterior tear, okay? You don't want that femur rolling down into the back of it. Okay, so best idea is to keep, or the rule is, to keep you safe, keep you strengthening, is to keep the height, if I grab this, keep the height of your hips above your knee, and then if you look at your feet, your knees are directly over your feet, your shin angle is the same as your back angle. Can't go wrong with that. The only thing you can go wrong with is if you go too heavy. So start off light, modestly light, so you know what it's like the next day, the next day, the next day. Now, Squats is just for general conditioning. It helps you because it helps you with bending down and picking up things, getting into the dishwasher. The squatting is good, so it gives you general strengthening, but it doesn't teach you how to do 
one-legged stuff. So we'll move into a lunge, and with your lunges, think of your lunge in position is the same as a squat. So I want my shin and my lower back to be the same angle as a squat. What I don't want is to be vertical. Because what that's going to do is load the back of my kneecap back there, but it's not going to do much for here. I've got no, if I'm in this position, my body weight's way back here. I'm not going to need a nice compression load through here. The knee loves compression and stability, okay? It doesn't really like shearing as much, okay? So you can handle shearing if you're not injured. You've got a meniscal tear, you want to make sure you're doing compression on it, just not too much, all right? So when you do a lunge, start with a very long stance, okay? Not a short stance, very long stance. That gives you enough opportunity to get your angles correct, all right? So if I start, say, 50% here and 50% there, by the time I come forward, I'm bending both knees and leaning forward, I get to about 75% this leg and about 25% that leg, then I push back through my heel back to 50-50. So it's a very graduated 50%, 60%, 70%, 75% or 80%, and then I drive back 70, 60, 50. Okay, so I'm shifting weight back on there. Then you'll notice that what's happening is when I come forward, I'm trying to get my angles right, so my back leg is now in a straight line with my lower back and on the same angle as my shin. Then I've got my body weight compressed over there, my weight's in my heel, right? which gives me the power, if I push my heel down, I'm using my hip, okay? And the hip <coughs> strength is gonna help you with your knee strength. Don't just try and, when you're here, when you come down, push up with your quads, okay? You wanna make sure you're doing heel, quads, and hip at the same time. You're trying to generate that movement pattern, almost like you're pushing the ground away from you, all right? So, <coughs> if you're looking from the front, when that setup was parallel feet, okay? When I step backwards, what I'm not doing is this, I'm not being like that. I want to be parallel, so when I step backwards, I'm still parallel. And when I come down, when I lunge down, my knee is tracking beautifully over the middle of my foot. What I'm not allowed to do is let the knee do that, okay? Meniscus, I'm not gonna like that. So keep it out there. Little tip for you, is when you drop down, you should be able to see on the inside of your knee, you should be able to see the inside of your foot. So I should be able to see this part. If I have crossed my knee over, I can't see it. So I know I'm doing it wrong. So if I'm here, I can see that inside of my foot, I'm right, okay? So think middle of the kneecap, middle of the foot. There's a little tip for you. So then we move on to your step down. One of my faves. This is where most people get unstuck. And it's probably because they don't practice single leg stuff much and or they don't have enough hip control. A lot of that's neuromuscular. They might have big glutes, but they can't stand on one leg. And that's from brain to knee. Now that's really important because if you don't have that, when you walk upstairs, down hills, things like that, you're on one leg, all right? You need that control, that stability to help out your knee meniscus. So setup is on a box. Now, I like being on a box. You don't have to be in a box. I like being on a box because it has the feeling of stepping down, or stepping back, so the eccentric phase is a little bit better. If you're just from the floor, you sort of just tend to push your knee forward, all right? You don't tend to sort of engage your hip and step backwards. It's the eccentric downward phase which I'm most concerned about for people, and that's one they wobble on the most. So for this position here, you've got to be able to stand on my leg. Now, if you can't even do that, you're over the shop, you will need to hold on to something. You will need to grab something to put your hand on, okay, until you get the balance. Right? I don't mind that. That's what we call a regression. But for those who can stand on one leg, what you want to aim for is the same rules about your squat, same rules about your lunge, your knee has to be over the middle of your foot, all right? So when I stand on my leg, I'm going to squat, meaning my knee goes forward, my hips go back, my shoulders go forward. I'm keeping my weight over my leg. I tap here, I'm not putting weight. Look at that, see I don't need to put weight through that leg. I'm not stepping back, okay? I step down, tap the floor, keep my knee in line with my foot, and then step back up, and try not to put my foot back down. If you have to, okay. 
but you're trying to get endurance on that leg to get your 10 or 12, 15 reps out of that without putting your foot down. That's gonna give you your stability you need, rather than every time you take your foot up, you have to step off it. That's taking weight out of it. So as long as you can, your meniscus can handle stepping down, tapping the floor, stepping back up, then you get, try and get those reps in all in a row. Just make sure, like I said before, don't let the knee cross over. If it crosses over that big toe, it's not gonna be happy or medial or lateral, okay? You don't wanna be doing this sort of stuff or teaching your brain that that's okay when you have that recovering meniscal tear. If you keep it in line, you're sharing the load between the two, the thing's even, okay? The forces are even, so you're not more likely to irritate one side or the other. Very important stuff, that one. And I always get, everyone with meniscal tears has to go through this phase to get this right, especially if they're going back to lots of walking or they're gonna try and go back running, even sport, they can't get that right, they're probably gonna irritate the meniscus again. So, make sure you get that one right. Then, the last one, more of an additional one for your quads, because most people, if you're like this, if you've had a meniscal tear, you've probably watched your quad disappear within a three few weeks. And if that's like you, you go, yeah, my quad like just turned into mush, you need to get the tone back, because if you don't get the tone back, you'll find the squat hard, the lunge hard, and the step down hard, okay? Hamstrings is a separate thing. You find hamstrings are not as bad as the quad. Any time the hamstring is sort of, well, one time the hamstring gets worse is if you get an ACL. We're talking meniscus, so this is going to turn into mush, especially if it's been swollen in the past. So what do you do? Leg extension machines in the gym. If you're at home, leg extensions will follow these bad boys. So put that in your chair. Maybe if it's a dining room chair, you can put it on the back of the chair, that's handy. And then around your foot. Little tip when I give everybody, flip it around, do it like that. Okay. Now from there, sometimes these aren't really high enough leg extensions. So what you could do is chock the front up with something, you know, you could put maybe this a little bit higher into there. So you're a you know, you're a little bit higher, so your foot's not on the ground but you may find a diamond chair is a bit higher. Otherwise, you have to lift your foot off the ground. So from there, simple leg extensions, okay? Make sure you're slowing it on the way down. You're probably gonna find that you can push it out, push it out, push it out, push it out, squeeze it, really get a big squeeze in here, close the knee, get your full extension, your terminal knee extension. When you come down, it will go shake like that. That's weakness, okay? So if you find that you're good on the way out and then you're shaky on the way in, you've got a significant weakness through your quads, you need to work on it, right? The better you get with that, you probably find it's a lot smoother, right? But it still shakes and flickers away. You probably find that little muscle group, the VMO is probably the worst, and that'll dance like this. As you get stronger better, you'll better see it. It'll tell you, you'll just have better tone, less shaking, a much improved smooth movement through there, okay? So it gets your rep and sets out of that, you'll find that help really helps you tone your quads. It's not massive muscle building, but we don't need that for meniscus. We need a stable knee that is happy, okay? It doesn't need huge big quads. It needs tone, it needs stability. So those are my little four that you can start entering. And remember, this is, disclaimer, for meniscal tears that are not going for surgery, okay? They are stable, all right? They don't need an operation, but they also are not really that painful, okay? They become sort of like asymptomatic. But if you don't strengthen them, you'll start getting problems with them. So work on those four, see how you go, and I'll see you next time.